Yeah, so yeah, we're, we're happy to be here. Got a lot of stuff. First of the melons now. Sweet corn. Just picked the melons yesterday for the first time. So that's taking it on a boat three weeks ago from Chile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> picked in yesterday. In the field yesterday. That's right. And the year like this where there hasn't been a lot of rain, the sweetness doesn't get diluted on them, so they're like they're the sweetest melon. And your family's been doing this for so my dad started Geneva Lakes Produce about about 30 years ago or so. And uh, he started off a little bit more of a hobby, but we've been farming, our family's been farming for, I stopped checking after five generations. <laughs> I mean, obviously being a farmer, right, trying right. to sell yourself, and this is like one of your only outlets to sell the food. What, yeah, what's well, the downside? Honestly, the downside is I was just talking to somebody about this, you know, my, I'm at market today, my brother, my dad, my sister, <laughs> and then tomorrow I'm at market, my dad's at market, and then Monday through Friday of next week, we're going to be farming. There's a lot of people that are a lot more health conscious now. Are you seeing oh, yeah. more of people coming out? And Absolutely. Well, that's the big thing, you know, with the last year especially, you know, people realized, hey, maybe my what happens when my grocery store shelves are empty? And that hits on one other thing. Let's say we have a torrential rain, hurricane, cloud, well, here would be a tornado. What comes through? What do you, got, what do, you do? Because you harvested right. all this stuff. Yeah, and you know what, we go to waste. The one thing that's nice about that is we, well, with our CSA program that I've talked about before, we tell members like, hey, load up, it's a rain weekend. So that helps a little bit. We do have some good food pantries that we work with, and when it rains, we can keep stuff fresher, you know, and nicer, and it's not as hot and whatnot. And so we do have, you know, those outlets, but overall, we take a, we take a big loss, and a lot of stuff does go to waste, you know, and it's just for something that we don't have any control of in weather. Well, and your CSA program is very different than others. A lot of right. farms will do a CSA program where they, you have you just get whatever they give you. Right. Yours, you let people pick what they want. Exactly. So they come home with the box, here's the size you get, fill it up. Mm -hmm. I think that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah and, awesome. and on a week where it's rainy, we'll tell them, like, hey, fill your box up and then grab an extra this, that, and the other thing, you know, and we really let them go crazy because they're the reason that we have the crop. You know, and so we like to reward them when we have uh, an abundance of stuff, and on a rainy weekend when our retail sales aren't going crazy. Perfect time. Do you yeah. find a lot of your customers are people who have and grow their own food as well? Yeah, honestly, even at the market here, you know, and I always worry, like, man, I'm selling a lot of plants. I hope these people come back and buy some stuff. <laughs> right. But the truth is, um, one. I grow better than they do, so they, no, I'm just and, kidding, and I'm just kidding. Hey, you know what, I was just about to say, the thing about it though, is when you grow your own food, you have an appreciation for right. things like this. Yeah, absolutely, and the thing is, you know, there are a lot of people who grow their own tomatoes and absolutely. who grow their own squash and stuff, but sweet corn and melons, those are a hardy thing to grow, so they're still coming out. Absolutely. And the, thing, the other thing, we grow successive plantings of most things, so like, right now, those beans over there, that's the, I think the fourth planting of beans that we are picking oh, from wow. right now yeah, so fantastic. then yeah and like sweet corn we're already on our second patch of sweet corn and so you know while somebody might have something from their garden for a few weeks right you know it tapers right. down pretty quick and then you know they didn't put in a successful planting most of the time well, so, a family of four or a family of six you would have to have three acres yeah, to I really can. sustain yourself all the time absolutely we've even learned you know from the wholesale stuff we talked about before um, you can have, you can call a tomato a fine ripened tomato if it has <laughs> the, the star of David on the bottom of it. Is what they call it. It's just this little tiny yep. star that shows a tiny bit of red, and they're like, "All right, it's got some red. I can call it vine ripened, pick it, and it'll last. No kidding, a month. You know, the more." demand there is and the better that we do overall the more we can invest in it and we can make it so that we because we've you've been over yeah, you've seen the greenhouses growing, yeah. that we grow in and i mean right now we honestly we need the demand yeah right it, heating a greenhouse if i'm able to come up with a good and efficient way of uh, organically even heating a greenhouse i can have stuff the first week of the market i can have tomatoes for the first week of the market well and as you mentioned with the cost when you're buying those real pretty fruits and vegetables in the store you don't realize that that buyer is going, okay, I like this farmer today, and those two, even though you picked it and harvested it, sorry, and you're sending it back. So the farmer's eating those losses. Yes. So you're doing a disservice to your farmers by buying in the grocery stores. So you're exactly right. I don't want to pick on grocery stores because they used to be, you know, all the local farmers bring their stuff to the grocery store, and then everybody can get it when they works convenient. That was neat. It's not that way anymore. No. Not even close. When farmers lose their ability to connect with the local community, they just they completely lose control when they're when they're wholesaling stuff out. You know, even we saw it last year with milk farmers 
grocery stores were running out of milk while farmers were dumping milk. Right. Why? Because the farmers had no connection to the retail market, and literally it was because schools were closed and uh, they were running out of the jugs that they sell in the grocery store. They had all kinds of empty containers that are used in grocery or at schools. But schools were closed, so oh, sorry, farmers. Grocery stores made like did great on milk last year while farmers literally would dump it just to keep their cows yep. producing you know they'd, they'd milk them and go dump it and milk and go dump it while people are selling out of it in the grocery stores and well, we don't know that you know, it's a direct connection it gives you control and it gives us control and it gives the consumers control and they know that they're keeping us alive and if they're keeping us alive we're going to keep producing them. But, you know, if they're just paying to whoever, they don't know who they're keeping alive and who they're not. You know, right. what farmers are going to survive and which ones aren't or where they are. That's so true.